Ever wondered how screen tones work in Clip Studio Paint? Today, you'll find out, and I'll teach you how to use them. Here's an overview of the video. There will be chapters and timestamps in the description. Screen tones are monogram dots, and I'm going to show you how to use them. How to make them. There are three ways to make tones. Way number one, by making a selection and clicking tones from the selection launcher. From here, you can adjust tones and get a preview. This will make a tone layer and a mask from the selection you make. Here is the preview and you can adjust all the settings here as well. And there's also this setting. If there are tones with the same settings, then combine them into one. You can also toggle this on and off. And once you're done with the settings, press OK. And here you have your tone. Way number two is by clicking tones in layer property. You can find layer property here by default. You click this button right here and your layer becomes a tone layer. This way you can easily turn the tones on and off by clicking on the tones button in the layer property. This way is good for when you already have your colors down and you want to convert them into tones. Way number three is by going to layer, new layer, then tone. This brings up simple tone settings, just like the first way. And when you're done, you press OK. The only difference is that this fills the whole canvas and makes a tone layer with an empty mask. Whereas way number one has a tone layer with a mask made from the selection you made. Values. Value is how light or dark a color is. Try out testing different colors and different shades and see how they look on your tone layer. Tones are affected by different values and brightnesses. And here I will show you how color affects tones. As you can see, in the darker colors, the tone is more dense than in the lighter colors. Here's it on and here's it off. And here's an example of the color wheel with the tone effect on and the tone effect off for side by side comparison. Here is a black and white gradient. And here is the same gradient with the tone effect applied to it. You can use any brush, the lasso fill tool or the paint bucket tool to fill tones in. Brushes that are affected by opacity and density like watercolour brushes and the airbrush can be used to mimic the effect of tone scraping. Frequency. Frequency is the size of the tone and how often it repeats. The larger the frequency number, the smaller the tone will be. The default number for this is 60, but you can increase it and decrease it as much as you'd like. Density. You have an option to use the color of the image or the brightness of the image. When you use the color of the image, the tone will be black and white with no transparencies. And if you use the brightness of the image, the tone will be black and transparent, where the white values are transparent and the black values are solid fills. Clusterization. Clusterization is an effect when an image is converted to using a limited number of tones. There are no gradients or smooth transitions of color. Here's a gradient with posterization off. And here's a gradient with posterization on. You can adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights. If you do not want one of the settings, you can simply drag down and it will disappear. And if you want more settings, you can hover over the bar and a plus sign will appear on your cursor. You can then click on the bar to add another setting. You can also add as many as you'd like. The more you add, the more transitions you would get. Reflect layer opacity. This allows for the tone density to be adjusted with the opacity of the layer.
And here it is with Reflect Layer Opacity on. And here it is without. Dot settings. Right here is where you can change the type of tone. There are many types and you can also mix and match by layering multiple tone layers as well. And you can also get a preview of your tones here as well. There are many different types of tones that you can choose from. Angle. You can adjust the angle of your tone here. By default, it's set to 45 degrees. And you can pick an angle between 0 and 359 degrees. When you set your dot setting to noise, the options noise size and noise factor become available. And these work slightly similar to frequency. You can adjust the noise size right here. You can choose between the size of 1000 and the size of 10. And you can adjust the noise factor here. You can also choose between 1000 and 0. Noise size is how large or small the noise is. Noise factor is the shape and how the noise moves. The larger the number, the more the noise distorts. This is a lot easier to see when your noise size is large. Dot position. You can move the dots up, down, left and right by using the X and Y axis. The X axis moves left and right. The Y axis moves up and down. Making screen tones different colours. This is my favourite part. Here are a few ways to make your tones different colours. Number one, by clicking layer colour via the layer property. If your tone is set to use colour of image, then you can change both the layer colour and the sub colour. If you click on the paint bucket, you can make your main colour become the layer colour. Another way to change the colour here is by double clicking on the bar. And this will come up with sliders. And you have many options. You have the colour wheels, your colours, and colour history. From here you can choose any colour you want. And when you're done, press OK. And if your tone is set to use brightness of image, then you have no option to change the subcolor. You can turn off layer color by clicking on layer color again. Way number two is by using a clipping mask. And the way to do this is to make a layer above the screen tone, fill it with color or gradient, and then Click, clip to layer below. And here you might notice, oh, nothing's happened. Well, this is because your tone might have been set to use color of image. And if you set it to use brightness of image, you can now clip to the tone like so. You can use layer modes, to apply different effects non-destructively without rasterizing the tone layer. A third way to colour tones is by making a new layer and filling it with colour. And then using blending modes or opacity to play with colour. Here you can use different types of blending modes. And this way is non-destructive. The fourth way to change the colour of tones 
is by rasterizing them. And before you do that, make sure you set the tone to use brightness of image so it is transparent. Then you right click the layer, then click rasterize. And from there, it becomes a normal layer. And from here, there are multiple ways to go about this. You choose the color you want, then you click block transparent pixels, then use fill, or you pick the color you want, and you go to edit, convert to drawing color. And this way, your tone is now the color you want, applying blending modes. You can use blending modes to apply different effects non-destructively without rasterizing the tone layer. Here my tone layer is set to use color of image and right underneath I'm drawing something just to show you how blending modes work. And here you can pick different blending modes. And you can see how the tone it's affected by them. I personally like setting the noise tone to lighten. I like adding this effect to my drawings to give them a more textured look. Make sure to play around with blending modes and find out what works for you. Remember, you can also mix and match multiple tones by either setting them to use brightness of image or via layer modes. And here I am mixing and matching different tones. Now you know how to use screen tones in Clip Studio. Have fun!